to take us further in this program, God wants to bless us through his word. And the speaker, the messenger, is Demelade Adewara. A round of applause for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. If you know you are happy to be in the house this morning, I want you to rise to your feet and shout hallelujah. Miracle ground, shout hallelujah. You can have your seats. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's, it's good to see everyone here this morning. We're all looking good and we're looking well. And I pray that the grace of the Lord will not end in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So first of all, I want to start by welcoming everyone to the finale of the Youth Convention 2024. If you are excited, put your hands together for Jesus. We are grateful to God for giving us another year. I mean, last year felt like yesterday when I was up here. And I mean, I'm here, we are here again this year. And uh, we thank God for how he has kept us from 2023 to 2024. And this has been a wonderful time from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Let's put our hands together for Jesus once again. So I'll just start by um, appreciating the church council and giving thanks to every one of us, the congregation, and also especially to my coordinators and to the youths in the house. The youths shout hallelujah. So the theme for our convention this year is tagged, The Fountain Bearing Its Fruits. The Fountain Bearing Its Fruits. And the Bible text is taken from the book of John 4, verse 1 to 16. If you are there, say, I'm there. Nobody yet, okay. <laughs> if you are not there, say, wait for me. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Is anyone there? All right, so I'll be starting from um, verse 5. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Seca, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse, verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Hallelujah. Verse 11, the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Verse 12, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave you the well and drank from it itself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Verse 13, where um, this reading will end. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So like I said, the title of our, the theme of our convention is tagged The Fountain. And the title of my sermon as well will be um, shedding light on this particular theme and the topic. In that particular verse, I mean, it's a very clear story, right? Um, Jesus came to a city, and he came by a well. I mean, he was hungry, he was thirsty as well. Then he met a woman at the well, and he told the woman to give me a drink, right? And the woman asked him, oh, what does Jews have to do with Samaritans and all of that? But basically, the, the, the key thing there for me is the fact that Jesus was thirsty and he was hungry, right? But at the same time, he was still passionate about this particular woman. He could have just said, you know what, just give me water. Like, I don't even, don't ask me questions. Just, you know, just give me water, really. But then he was, he still probed for that to ask her questions. And, you know, he was able to also present himself right there. As if you read further, he presented himself as the living water. He made it clearer when he told her that, you know, if you drink this particular water, you will thirst again. But the one I have to offer you 
is the one that never runs dry. So he presented himself as the fountain that never runs dry. So bringing it back home, in, our, in this current time, a lot of us as Christians, we are thirsty. We are thirsty for success. We are thirsty for validation. We are thirsty for relevance, identity, and so many things. There's so much um, pressure. There's so much thirst for, for different people right now. And many at times, we try to quench those thirst in wrong places. We quench it by go scrolling on social media. We quench it by, um, try to quench it by speaking to friends or speaking to people and all of that. But meanwhile, the only person that can't quench that thirst is the fountain of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So instead of us seeking to quench our thirst in all those areas, why this verse is saying, come to him. Come and drink from the fountain that never runs dry. That's exactly what Jesus is calling, talking to him, saying to us today, this morning, that we should come to him, that he is the fountain that never runs dry. If you are here, shout hallelujah. So how exactly do we stay connected to the fountain? We stay connected by maintaining the fellowship with God. I know we hear this over and over and over again, but it's important that we continue to enforce and continue to um, instill it in our minds that for us to remain in this fountain, to stay connected to him, we need to dwell in that secret place. As individuals, as people, I'm not just talking to you tonight, I'm talking to every one of us. Is your secret altar burning? Is the fire lit on your altar? Because at time, most of the times we ignore our secret place. Yes, we do our fellowships. Yes, we do all those things. But we ignore our one-on-one -on -one community. Our secret place is supposed to be our personal altar. It, you can have a place in your home where you pray and all of that. But at the same time, your secret place should always be with you. You should always be able to activate it. I was speaking to um, the youth in one of our monthly um, programs that we do, Tag the Youth Connect. And I was, we were talking about secret place and all of that, really. And I was telling them that you should, be, you should carry your secret place with you. You should not have a problem and you, you are running to your house, to the cupboard, or running to your one small room you have in your house to go and pray, ah, that's my altar. Like, that's not what it should be. You should be able to carry your secret place with you in the sense that when anything comes up, when the devil is trying to tempt you, or when you're in a situation where you feel like you need help, you instantly turn on, you turn on that, that you enter your secret place immediately. You are actively carrying it with you. And I made an example of our general overseer here. Yeah, that yes, this is the altar of God and all of that. But Gio won't, if you come to Gio to pray for you, or come to any pastor in this church to pray for you, they won't tell you, uh, it won't be a necessity really that they bring you here. Because that power is within them. They carry that secret place with them. And that is what every, each and every one of us should be, should, should long to have as well. That secret place should always move with you. You should always be able to activate that secret place wherever and wherever you find yourself. If you are still here with me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So what happens when we are con disconnected from that fountain or when we are not um, actively tuned into that network, that system, the fountain that never runs dry? It never runs dry, but what we should know is that we can run dry. Hallelujah. So if you are not connected to that fountain that, that never runs dry, you will begin to start drying up as an individual. And we understand where, um, it, let's say, a, um, maybe a stem or something is cut out from a tree, right? What happens to that particular um, this thing? It begins to wither. It begins to die. But when you are connected, when it's still connected to the, um, to the tree, right, it continues to grow and it continues to bear fruit. So that's where we are going that when you are connected to that fountain, what begins to happen to you? What are the signs and the truths we are supposed to see from you as a person connected to the fountain? Hallelujah. So what exactly does it mean to bear fruit? Yes, we, we, I think we, we, should, we understand what the fountain means, that we know that Jesus is the fountain that never runs dry. And there's also the part of bearing fruit. It's not just to have the fountain um, within you or flowing within you. If it flows within you, it needs to also, there, there needs to be fruit. The, the fruits, necessary fruits that need to show forth when that fountain is running in you. So what, is the, what exactly does it mean to bear fruit, right? So just like the literal sense of it, bearing fruit means producing something of value, being able to um, bring out something that is good, something that people can see, right? If you are bearing fruit, it is never hidden. When you bear fruit, everybody should be able to see it. And that is where we are going to, that as Christians, we should be able to bear good fruits, that wherever we find ourselves in, in what situation, wherever we go, we should be able to bear good fruits. And what exactly are these fruits? 
So in the book of Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23, we're able to see the different fruits that we are supposed to be producing as Christians. We are supposed to, like it is a, it is a must that we are able to bear these good fruits, right? In the book of Galatians, yes, 5, verse 22, it said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So we've seen the fruit that is expected for Christians to bear. Because as Christians, it is expected that that fountain is flowing, it's in you, and it is flowing out of you as well. Hallelujah. So if you are connected to the fountain, you should bear good fruits. Your life should reflect Jesus always. It's not only about you having it. It should always reflect, you should always reflect Jesus. When people see you, when you speak, the way you move, the way you talk, the way you do your things, it should always reflect Jesus. Those are the good fruits that you are supposed to bear. It is not enough to just um, have him and just keep him to him. You are supposed to share, share that goodness. When Jesus came to that world, what did he do? He shared, he was able to relate with this woman. He was able to share the good news with her. And the thing about that particular story is, the, obviously, that woman's life changed forever. She, was, she did not remain the same. Because she was also able to ask from him, that can I drink of this water as well, so that I may not thirst anymore. So this morning, that should be, if you're not going to take home anything, what should, you should take home is, I want to drink from this fountain of life. How many of us want to drink from this fountain of life today? Hallelujah. Yes, that's very good. That's, that's the reaction I like to be seeing. Thank you. So why is it important for us to bear fruits, right? We are currently in a country plagued by so many bad things, I'm sorry to say, right? I mean, corruption, greed, dishonesty. It's very hard to find people that are honest, right? How many of us actually agree? It is hard to find people that are honest, people of integrity. I mean, yesterday we um, were talking about character, and even today the debate was talking about character as well. So it's very hard for, to find people that are upright in this country, right? And that is where we should come in as Christians. And it is actually sad that it is we, the Christians, that are the chief ringleaders in some sectors for these particular bad characters. We that we are supposed to be the lights in areas that we find ourselves, we are, some of us are the ringleaders. We are the ones saying, you know what, change these numbers, do this thing, do that, do this. But meanwhile, what we are supposed to be doing, we are supposed to be the light. We are supposed to be able to correct. Because if that fountain is flowing in you, you are supposed to be bearing good fruit wherever you find yourself in. Say, I will bear fruit. I will not just bear fruit, but I will bear good fruit. Hallelujah. So it's important for us that wherever we find ourselves, we are able to bear good fruit. Because in the book of Romans 8 verse 9, it says, All of creation is patiently waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So they are patiently waiting. They want to see that, ah, Shabi, you call yourself uh, Jesus baby. You call yourself, uh, sorry, Genesis will say maybe Jesus body, something like that. But <laughs> if you actually, you know, represent this name, if you know that you carry this fountain within you, you should be able to bear fruit that wherever you find yourself in, wherever you go to, it doesn't matter the, the situation, it doesn't matter wherever you find yourself in, that you are a tree planted by the riverside, that you bear fruit in and out of season. That is what you should always see. That is what you should always imbibe wherever you find yourself. Because, yes, we work in different sectors. We work with, like, we, we are in this world, right? And we mingle with a lot of people. But we should be able to differentiate ourselves and be able to say, no, you know what? I will be a light wherever I find myself. Say, I will be a light. Yes. So we are talking about bearing fruits, right? So bearing fruit means standing out. It means not following the crowd where everyone else is going one way. You don't have to follow the crowd. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, because everybody's going this way, me too, let me go that way. No, you make informed decisions. You are able to make calculated decisions. It's, po it's actually very possible that if everybody's going this way, you should also go that way. But not because, ah, because I want to be different. I want to stand out. Then you go the other way. I'm sorry, but whatever you see, you take. So, like, we make informed decisions. We make calculated decisions, right? And that is why the fountain flows through us. If that fountain flows in you, you will make the right decisions. It will order your steps, right? There's a Bible verse that says that the Lord delights in the steps of the godly, that though they stumble, they will not fall because what he holds them by the right hand. So, what's that? I really love that. Um, since I came across that scripture, it has really spoken to me a lot, right? That, yes, though you stumble. So, it's like 
you will stumble, like you will have, you will hit roadblocks, right? But what, what does he say? That if you are connected, if you are connected to me, I'm already holding you by the right hand. So it's like, before you fall, I'm already holding you, as long as you are in me. So you can, if you are not connected to the fountain, you will fall, I'm sorry. But if you are connected to him, he's saying that, yes, I know you. You are human, you are in this world, right? You will hit a lot of issues, but at the same time, I am there for you. And that is the message I always love when it comes to um, preaching the gospel, the message of love. Most times, we try to, we, a lot of people focus on the destruction, destruction like hellfire, and sometimes it's understandable for some younger people who choose to like shy away because people, some people just choose to dwell on like this, this condemnation, destruction, hell, and everything. But I mean, the gospel is, is about love. It has always been about love, right? Because even from the story of Jesus, God said, for, he loved, for God so loved the world. Yeah, but that's not our topic today, right? We're talking about bearing fruits. Bearing fruits. So yes, like I said, this is the best time for believers to bear fruits. Yes, as bad as it is right now, this is the best time. Because there are so many opportunities. So many opportunities for you to help people, so many opportunities for you to bear fruit, to show love, to show kindness, to be patient with others. So this is the best time for we as Christians to bear fruit, to show that, yes, we are connected, truly connected in that fountain. And it doesn't mean you have to give more than you should, really. It's just by little, little things, the little things, really, to show that, yes, I care about this person, I love this person. Oh, yes, ah, this person did this to me, but I'm able to, you know, show that, no, I am better than this. But no, some people, ah, when they do this to me, I'm like, eh, me, I will, I will show you that, ah, yes, yeah, so I'm Jesus, this, you know, me too, money, how did you say that thing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So please, it's important for us as child of God, to, children of God, to bear fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. So how exactly do you bear fruits, right? We've been talking about the fountain of life. The, let's remember the story, the fountain, before we went into bearing fruit. So how exactly do we bear fruit, um, good fruits? We stay rooted in the word. That is one. We must stay rooted in the word. Joshua 1 verse 8 says that this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. And you must meditate upon it when? And night. So it's important that the word is our manual for living. The word is our manner for living. I was listening to um, Pastor Bobadi this morning. <laughs> she didn't say me, but I was listening when she was emphasizing on the fact that we've not started reading our Bibles as Christians. She said she just recently started reading her Bible. And I'm sure when she means that, she doesn't mean that I just started like literally today. She means that there are some things that are being revealed to her. She's like, wow, this is, I've, maybe I've, I've read this Bible verse before, but like I have a new understanding of what it is. And it's really touched. I was just, I was walking there and I just heard and I'm like, this thing makes sense. So it's important for us to stay grounded. We constantly read the word. The thing about the word is that there is something new. You might read this particular verse and today it means something to you. Tomorrow it might mean something else to you. And I tell, I tell um, my people when I talk to them that God is multidimensional. He doesn't follow just one way. Today he might reveal you, himself to you as this. Tomorrow he's revealing himself to you in another way. So you should be able to pray and just ask that God, what way are you revealing yourself to me today? Don't go with that one revelation that you have. So all that as a tip, don't go with that re one revelation. Every day, ask God, even if it's that one, your favorite Bible verse, I can tell you that there, there are new revelations for it every day. Every day. Are we still following? If you are here, shout Jesus. Jesus. So I said, the, how do we bear fruit, right? First one, we stay rooted in the world. Secondly, we rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper, is our comforter. And thirdly, I think I spoke about this earlier, we serve others. I tell you, one of the best ways to bear good fruit is to serve others. To serve others, to show love and kindness to other people, and just be there for them. Even if it's just like you are putting up a call, or you are sending a text message or something, please show love to people. 
this is the times are very very hard but it will not be hard for us in jesus name so please in ever in any way you can try to show love try to be there for people i know that god will bless us infinitely in the mighty name of jesus so i talked about staying rooted in the world relying on the holy spirit serving others and for living a life of integrity i talked about how people are so dishonest in this where we situation we find ourselves in i'm not trying to say it's only nigeria yes it happens around the world but in nigeria people are always looking for ways to cheat you to just like people are always looking for ways to just feel make them feel that they are smarter than you and it's not right so decide today that yes i demilade i will stand out now put your hand on your chest and say i demilade you can say my name <laughs> say i demilade i will stand out i will bear good fruit i will be the light in wherever i find myself in i will shine Thank you.